Hi, Andrew here from Systemic Creative. We're here to talk about systems archetypes. Thanks for joining us. It is part of a series, so if you've seen this introduction 15 times before, do feel free to skip it, I won't be offended. At Systemic Creative, we are here to help organisations and businesses grow and develop, to be more productive, more effective, and more resilient, but at the same time to have better well-being throughout, happier staff, happier teams, and a happier, more positive organisation as a result. We look at the organisation as an organism, and this is a paradigm which helps us to make leaps into how to change organisational dynamics for the better. It's a blend of systems dynamics, systems thinking, leadership, teamship, and most importantly, listenership. Now, our organisational development programme has been described as groundbreaking, paradigm shifting, and experiential reprogramming and radicalising the way that people work, among other things. So do check out the links in the description below to our programme if that's of interest to yourself, your business, or your organisation, or community group, or whatever. And of course, do subscribe to our channel for more content. We also have some fun stuff on the channel as well, what the team get up to and some fun projects and things like that. So you can join us for those sorts of things as well. So we're here to talk today about systems archetypes. Now systems archetypes are part of the wider discipline of systems thinking, which is something which was pioneered really by Donella Meadows back in the 1970s with her release of a seminal work, Limits to Growth which is also the name of a systems archetype, which was the first, and it's one that Donella Meadows came up with and articulated in the book. Now, I highly recommend Donella Meadows' work, for, particularly for people who are new to systems thinking. She's a great teacher and a brilliant thinker, so do look her up on the web. You'll find her on YouTube as well, so, so look into Donella Meadows. Well, systems archetypes are also called systems traps, and the reason for that is it's an archetypal set of system dynamics into which Almost any system can fall if you're not careful, particularly human systems. Organisations, businesses, community groups, anything that involves people can fall into these systems traps. And generally speaking, they are things that can be quite disruptive and that we would want to avoid. So in these talks, we'll look at each archetype. We'll describe the archetypal system dynamics. We'll look at some real world examples of it. We'll look at what the leverage points in the system are and Arguably most important, we'll look at how to avoid falling into those systems traps, and if we're already in it, how we get out of it. We will assume a bit of systems language knowledge already, but we'll also do our best to describe things and how they work as we go through the talk. Okay, let's dive into today's talk. Tragedy of the Commons Systems Archetype. This one is strongly correlated to the limits to growth systems archetype. It's a bit more complicated than that one. So if you haven't already watched the limits to growth systems archetype in this series, give that a watch first because it will give you an idea of the underlying principles on which this archetype operates. So here we have the uh, systems diagram and it's an example rather than using arbitrary labels. I always think it's useful to use an example and this example is a forestry operation or multiple forestry operations in a single forest or a single area of forest if you will. So here we've got two companies. Now it can be any number of companies really, uh, any number of forestry enterprises, but it's simpler just to look at two but exactly the same principles apply if it's more than that. So you've got company A and company B. You've got company A up here and company B down here. Now, the activities of these companies are identical. So we've got a reinforcing loop there for company A and a reinforcing feedback loop for company B. So what happens is company A undertakes forestry activity. They chop some trees down, they convert those trees into product, whether it's timber or paper or some other such thing, and they sell that product and they make gains, they make profit. And that profit can be reinvested back into the company, uh, which enables them to do more activity. So this is a, a reinforcing feedback loop. The more activity they do, the more profit they make, which means the more activity they're then able to add to their existing operation. And company B is operating in exactly the same way. Now they can carry on indefinitely, 
other than the fact that both of their activities, company A and company B, adds, so you've got a plus there, it adds to the total activity. And that's the total activity in this area of forest. And what that total activity does, no surprises, is if we follow the arrow, it reduces the stock of trees. So this is the stock in the system, the trees, and it's being reduced by the activity of company A and company B. Now, this is very similar. You'll see the similarity here to limits to growth, and the, the stock of trees is the limit, the limiting factor in this system's archetype. But what we've got here is a stock which naturally replenishes itself. So trees naturally seed, they naturally grow in a managed forest that, that can be uh, orchestrated with human intervention, of course. Uh, but there is unavoidably a delay in that replenishment rate. And you can see that delay over here on the right. Now, whenever there is a delay in a systems model, a causal loop diagram, you always need to take note because delays are always important. So there's a delay there, and that's the replenishment rate in this example of the growth of trees. So it takes a while for a tree to grow from seed to a mature tree capable of being harvested for profit. Now this reducing stock reduces the gains that these companies make, and there are various mechanisms for that. One is that uh, if it's a natural forest, the easy to get resource, the easy to get trees are all harvested first, and then you've got to go further up a mountain or further into a boggy area or something like that, so it's, it's more difficult to do, so it costs more. Um, also, simply running out of trees uh, means that there is less stock to go out, so that there is simply less profit to be made because less trees can be cut down because they just aren't there until they've grown again. So we have two balancing feedback loops. So we've got two reinforcing small feedback loops, but two balancing feedback loops here, top and bottom. And again, this, there could be five companies and you'd have five reinforcing loops and five balancing loops, okay? So it doesn't matter how many there are. Now, we can clearly see that if this stock runs out completely, the activity here stops. Right, it doesn't pass gold, doesn't collect 200 quid, it just stops. If this, uh, if this, sorry for the Monopoly reference there, I thought it was quite appropriate though. Uh, if this stock runs out completely, so, so that's the tragedy in the tragedy of the commons, okay? And the reason it, it, it can happen is these companies are often operating in total ignorance of each other. Now, other real world examples of this systems archetype are things like fishing, uh, fossil fuel extraction, those are the big, you know, some big issues, aren't they, that, that face us uh, as humanity as a whole. And often these things can be going on without really any of these companies paying attention to what any of the other companies are doing. And it's extracting a common resource. So that's why it's tragedy of the commons, because it's a common resource it's referring to. And ignorance is a key part of the problem. Now, something, uh, a way in which this can affect our organisations is there can be common resources within our organisation. So let's say internet bandwidth, IT resource, uh, server allocation, uh, all those sorts of things, or even something as basic as the number of cups in the kitchen, right? You go to the kitchen, you want to make a brew, make a cup of coffee, and there's no cups because everybody has all taken the cups and they're all having a brew. And there's a replenishment rate for the cups, right? It's how long somebody takes to drink the coffee and to be bothered to get back up, wash the cup and put it back in the kitchen. So I'm sure we've all experienced that at some point. It's definitely a tragedy for me if I can't get coffee when I need it. You know, I don't know if other people feel that way. But there are obviously much bigger tragedies, uh, you know, that, that can happen. And overfishing, that's a major one. Um, fossil fuel extraction, as we said, those are examples of it. So what are the uh, leverage points in this system? Where can we, where can we make a difference? So for me, my interpretation of this system, the leverage point is really the activity rates um, and this, this delay here. Uh, and there's possibly related to that is uh, something to do with the type of stock. You know, what can we do about this stock? What can we do about this stock and what can we do about this delay? So the leverage point is here really and, and we can potentially make a difference. So how do we do that? In this system, in this, in this systems archetype, so, so to avoid this, we need responsibility and accountability. They have to be key. We mentioned ignorance. We need people to not be ignorant. We need people to be able to see 
the big picture and understand the whole system. Because if that doesn't happen, bl bl a blame culture occurs. And company A can easily blame company B for doing too much and vice versa. People can blame other people in the system if there isn't cooperation and people, are, and people aren't seeing the big picture. People are just focused on their own gains, their own reinforcing feedback loop, their own profits. When that comes to common resources, that's where the problem comes in. So we need people to understand the system as a whole. So we need a culture of systems thinking and we need a culture of responsibility and accountability. Those are the things which make people stop and take notes and think, hang on a minute, we need to change something. It's easy to avoid accountability if you can blame something else. So tied to that, we need education. We need people to understand the system in which they're operating and what's going on. We need to understand the consequences. And perhaps another way to do it is by uh, enforced penalties or regulation. So fishing is a good example of that. Uh, there are regulations which, you know, often very controversial regulations, which avoid who can fish where and when and how much. Uh, there probably needs to be significantly more in actual fact, but that's a, a tangent we won't go down. Um, so we mentioned about leverage points here and, and the delay. We can potentially reduce this delay can't we? So if we are, uh, let's, let's use our forestry example again, we can change the type of tree that we grow in. We could have one that grows really quickly uh, and we can harvest quickly, provided that that is suitable for the types of products we want to make. We may need hardwood, for example, and therefore it wouldn't be suitable. Uh, so there are all sorts of things to consider, but there are ways that we can look at reducing this delay and that's why it's a leverage point in the system. And that's by looking at alternatives for our choice of stock. Um, in terms of the impending tragedy of overextraction of fossil fuels, alternatives, as we mentioned in limits to growth, uh, are a key factor to avoid that. So that's Tragedy of the Commons. Thank you for watching the video. Any comments, any other thoughts or insights you have about this systems archetype, please whack them in the comments. Always love to hear from people. I appreciate your time. Do check out the other videos in this series about other systems archetypes and the other good stuff that we've got on the channel. And of course, consider subscribing. And finally, do have a look at the links below to our organisational development programme, which contains things like this, but much, much more and lots of tools to improve organisations, to make them more effective, more productive and with better embedded well-being throughout happier teams and happier organisations as a whole. Thank you for your time. Hope to see you again soon.